Case recovery program here on the peninsula. So we are going to launch, hopefully in the next year or so, we're going to launch the very first faith-based recovery program right here in Redwood City. So um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the 12 steps and the 12 biblical principles that created those 12 steps combined together, and we're going to we're going to help folks get their lives back together. Okay. So can you tell me what differentiates this program from other programs? Just talk me through, what is it like for someone who enters the program? What will their journey be as they start in this program until they graduate? Yeah, I know, everybody's so excited. It's been, you know what, really quick. It's been like two years since we've been able to really hang out. So let's give everyone this really quick. Amen, right? I, I, you know what, this is, I'm, like I said earlier, I am, this is amazing, folks. This is awesome. Thank you guys for being here. This is so cool. Yes, so what, what makes us different, okay? And I'm not trying, just so you know, when I say what make, what's going to make us different, I'm not trying to bag on other programs because I know there's a lot of folks that are here that have gone through other programs and they've worked. But what's going to be different about us is we're, we're like I said, we're going to be a 12-month live-in program, right? It's going to be a serious recovery program that's biblically based. A lot of the repo, repo, uh, uh, recovery programs, sorry, a lot of the recovery programs here in the peninsula, we call them spin dry programs, so 30 days, 60 days, and 90 day programs. It's just not enough time when you have somebody that's been on the streets homeless or anywhere between 5, 10, or 15 years to get their whole life together in 30 days. It's just not going to happen. I've got 16 years of sobriety myself. Yeah. Thank you. And trust me. I was a train wreck when I came into recovery. There was no way 30 days I was going to get my life back together. It took, well, it's 16 years later and I'm still, I'm still working on a lot of things, right, sweetheart? But, but I'm, but I'm <laughs> thank God for my wife. But, um, but you know, but I'm, I'm recovered. And that's, and that's the thing. We want our folks to graduate from our program and be recovered. And uh, so that's what's going to stand us different. Thank you. Yeah, so can you talk us through what it would be like for someone who entered the program? What would the beginning look like? How would the end be? Just walk us through the whole process. Yeah, so when you first come in, um, like most programs that are, that are uh, extended six to 12 months, the first 30 days is a complete blackout. So when somebody enters in the program, they'll go completely silent for 30 days. No outside communication. Um, they will stay inside. They won't go anywhere uh, but the program between the house and the office for 30 days straight. No cell phone, no, no visits, no mom and dad, no letters, no none of that. And it, this is, and what happens is, is because there's a, there's a couple of things that need to happen in this time, is that we need to make sure that the person, when they come in, that they're going to get along with each other. Because our folks are going to live in the same room, share the same bathroom. I mean, it's, it, it's going to be tight. So they're going to be living in the same, you know, system together. So we want to make sure that those 30 days, they have time to just quiet their minds, slow down, take a few moments to get their lives right, and then make sure that they can get along with each other. Right? And so then that way we know and they know if this is going to be a good fit for them. And then after that 30 days, boom. I mean, they're, they're going to be working on recovery those first 30 days. But after that first 30 days, intense recovery. And then after about 60 days, it, we're going to start doing a really deep dive into um, just un, unpacking everything. So for let me throw out some statistics for you guys that might not know. But 90-something percent of the folks that are living on the street are battling addiction drugs, alcohol, mental illness, and, and there's there's a lot of stuff going on on the streets. And I would say out of that 90%, you've got a good 70 to 80% of those folks that are, that are dealing with the drug addiction are also battling family trauma, sexual abuse, uh, verbal abuse, physical abuse, um, uh, foster care programs, single single parent homes, no, no nuclear family to grow up in, no structure whatsoever. So when they come into this program, this program is going to open them wide out. They're going to they're going to go deep, deep, deep in all of their hurts and all of their wounds, and they're going to go from the ground up. And I think that's something that's, that's so great about the program. But it doesn't just take care of their physical needs or their emotional ones. Because if you really want to help someone, you got to take care of both. If you if you put someone in housing but they're still struggling with that trauma and that addiction, they're going to end up losing it and back where they were before. 
And if you help some on the streets with some of the trauma they've gone through with their addiction, if they're still in that environment, they're still facing all that difficulty, they're going to fall right back into their addiction. So by having a long program like this, we can take care of everything at once and fully help them on the journey from start to finish. Another exciting thing about the program is some of the partners and the job opportunities we're going to have towards the end with the life skills. Yes. So um, part of the program is after after the first six months of just deep recovery, the next six months will be all job skills and job training. So we're going to go into what's called the work phase. Now this is the phase where, where we're going to really rely on everybody that is here and everybody that knows about the ministry to really seriously pray for our folks. Okay? Because most folks will, will walk out of a program once the work phase starts. That's, that's the biggest drop off because all of a sudden reality and you know all sorts of goals and you know all my oh my gosh I only got six more months to go but the the really cool thing is that what we're gonna try to do is is we're working with a couple organizations one of the organizations that we're working with is a company called Asland and at, they have they have homes right so our, our model just so you know I didn't mention this we're not doing a massive 20 30 man recovery we're doing a five to seven person men's recovery home and they're going to be in a house so they're going to go to a classroom during the day for four to six hours to do recovery and then when they're done they're going to come home they're not in an institution let's face it most of our folks know what an institution feels like they've been locked up they've been in jail we don't want our folks to feel like they're in an institution we want them to come to their house they're going to walk through the front door. They're just going to be a nice living room, a kitchen. They got their own bedroom, a dresser. You know, all the all the things that we we all everybody here we take for granted sometimes that we that's comfortable for us. We want our folks to just relax. We want our folks to be able to feel at ease. But the work phase is really important. So we're going to partner with Chick Fil A, State Farm. Um, we're going to be partnering with some uh, some janitors. Janitor, yeah, right on, right. Free, free food. So we're going to be partnering with some other other organizations that I can't really uh, mention right now, but um, two of our biggest supporters is the Redwood City Police Department and the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office. They've really, really been helping us a lot. They've come behind us. And been there. Yes. So um, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes tonight, you're going to hear from some some folks that are part of Redwood City Good. Police Department that that have been with us through this journey. And it's been a, an amazing connection for us as well. So, um, what's that? Any other questions? That's pretty good. Yeah, and I think part of the reason we're part of the way we're trying to avoid that drop off, that drop off when people get to the jobs portion, is a wide variety of partners. Because often there's not too many jobs available. You see a lot of uh, like construction jobs and uh, like, uh, uh, food service and janitorial jobs. And while those are great, and while they can be a great fit for many people. We're not for everyone. So by working with like State Farm and potentially call centers and stuff like that, and having a wide variety of jobs, allowing us to have to have a uh, to have a job fair for these people and for other homeless people, we can help find people something that works specifically for them. Yes. Yeah. I just you know you just said something that reminded me reminded me of something. I'm sorry. So you know what? I'm I'm not a person that gets nervous a lot. Man, I'm nervous right now. I don't know why. I, I, I'm just seeing all these people, you guys, I'm so overwhelmed right now, it's unbelievable. But listen, really quick, I, I know I know we're here asking for your for your for your for your time and your and your talents and your treasures. And, 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 and I, oh yeah, we yeah. But listen, seriously, you know what? If if you're somebody that's here right now that owns your own business or you know or you're in the trades and you could be a mentor connect with Vicky over at the table and Kimberly over at the table and give us your name and stuff because when we go into the work phase like like Nicholas said we want to have we want to have a job fair so we would love for you to come in and present your your job construction or computers or whatever it is we want to get as many partners as we possibly can so we can hit every single person's needs and and what they, what their skill sets might be so if you are a business owner or someone in the trades that, that's willing to mentor somebody, please let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how's it looking for staffing and the creation of the program? Do we have people down? How is that going? Yes. So really quick, so uh, I've got Mike here. Where's Ricky? Ricky. Yeah. Come here, Rick. Come here. So this is the first time I've done this publicly, so I guess now I gotta put my money where my mouth is, right? Oh my gosh. So everybody, I want you guys to meet our, our new leadership team. This is Mike Murray. He's gonna be our operations director and um, our, our recovery director.
and this is Ricky Wade, and he's going to be our spiritual director, and he's going to do everything when it comes to the discipleship making and the, the biblical studies part. And these two together are partnering together, and they've been working really hard on getting the uh, really good curriculum built for our folks to come into. And these guys are amazing. And uh, would you guys like to share a few things? Anything? Go ahead. Well, everybody, thank you for being here tonight. Um, what Dave said earlier about not just addressing physical needs and recovery, you know, the trauma is the really, uh, that can be a life or death thing in recovery. You know, we call them core issues. And um, one thing about that is we are actually going to have people on staff volunteering who are trained psychologists, and they're going to help our, our gentlemen work on their core issues. It's very important. And this thing about why a Christian program, you know, I, I tried for years to sober up just in secular uh, meetings or whatnot. Nothing clicked for me until I realized that I was broken before the Lord. That's when, when I humble myself before the Lord. I'm holding the microphone. I need a tutorial for the microphone. <laughs> Once I realized that I was Woo! before the Lord, He started rebuilding, and uh, that that made all the difference in my life. And I'm just thankful to be a part of this. My story was before I ever did the 12 steps, right? I was in River City County Jail. So it's really close to my heart doing something in River City. Uh, I gave my life to God in River City County Jail. I got on my knees and prayed and asked him to come into my life and change my direction. And uh, he did. We, immediately he did. He started opening doors for me. And so I experienced that, that spiritual awakening early on. And so that's what I think we want to focus on in this program is not just waiting 12 months for these guys to have a spiritual awakening, but right away offer them that power of the Holy Spirit and God and, and grace of the gospel message. And so that's what we're going to get into. We're going to dive into that stuff. Yeah. So thanks. And as much as you know, please, if you guys can, when, you, when, you have, or when you're with your small groups, your Bible studies, or wherever you're at, please pray for these two men right here because it's going to be a powerful, powerful recovery program. And we're going to see a lot of men graduate from this program and never go back out on the streets. Never, never go back on the so our, our goal, our goal is, is to not only help our folks deal with all the brokenness inside, but I'm telling you, it'll be such a joy and such a blessing to be able to walk our guys in a courtroom and look at the judge and say, this man is now redeemed. He's no longer, he's no longer going to go to jail. He's no longer going to be a part of the system. He's now giving back. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great for all of us? You know, we all, we all live here in River City. We, support, we help support the businesses in River City. Wouldn't it be cool, the one guy that you see always panhandling on the corner, and, and 12 months from now, you walk into Starbucks, or you walk into a coffee shop somewhere here in River City or whatever, and you see that face serving you the coffee? Yes. Right? That's, that's what we want. That's what we want. We want our folks to be recovered. We want our folks to know Jesus, and we want them to know sobriety. All right? Thank you. So we have the program set out. We have the staffing for it. Yes. We have it all planned out. So what do we need next? What else do we need to finally get this program a reality? I have a theory that some people in the audience have been, might have a clue. Yeah, money. <laughs> Lots of it. You know, it's so interesting. You know, when, when God, when I pray, and, and my wife and I were praying about this, and, and we started hearing Jesus say, recovery, recovery, recovery. You, know, you don't realize it, you know, you start listening to that vision and then all of a sudden, you know, I sit down with, with Vicky and Vicky starts, Vicky's really good with numbers, I'm not, and Vicky starts going, you know how much this is going to cost, right? And she starts telling me and I'm like, oh, well, gosh, this is okay. So, you know what, folks, just seriously, if we, we have, we have a, a family that gave us a million dollars, right? Woo! And, and it's all, it's all the Lord, it's all the Lord. And, and with that, with that, with that money, everything that you donate, like Nicholas said, everything you donate is getting matched. So we are, we are, we are on a, a, a very good pace right now on keeping going. If we get to the two million dollar mark, which we're really hoping for, that gives us enough money with staff and rent to run the program for three years. Woo! Doesn't mean doesn't mean you're not going to let off the gas pedal and keeping money coming in because. At three years, as everybody knows, the last two years have gone by like that. So time goes by fast. 
So we need folks, you know, we really need, I, you know, this is obviously a sign that people really believe in what we're doing. So thank you so much for being here. So we're really hoping that you guys will see what's going on when you see people graduating and stuff, that that will make you realize like, hey, this works. And that we have people that will continually give to this program. Yeah. Yeah. So we started, once we got the million dollar match, we started going hard for this a few months ago yeah. with the goal of raising $1 million and then having a match to give us $2 million. So far we have raised $325,000. So Matt, So thank you all. We're going to do another quick break now, and then we'll be back in a few minutes, and you'll hear the testimony of Danny, someone we've worked with before, and hear from Brian Greenberg from Life. Oh. Thank you all so much. <laughs>